So, Ankit, can we start now? Yeah, I think we can uh, wait for uh, a few more attendees. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, we are uh, here today with the second chapter to the uh, webinar series on uh, IBC uh, vis a vis uh, Surfacey. And uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Anil Goel, our uh, chairman, uh, who is uh, once again here to uh, deliberate and discuss on uh, whatever he will like to share on IBC. And today he will also be dealing with the comparison between IBC versus Surfacey. We also have an uh, uh, advocate, Mr. Santnu Ray, our partner, uh, who is uh, taking care of our uh, Mumbai operations. And uh, uh, Santanuji, Mr. Goel, we, we welcome you uh, today in the webinar. And I think uh, we can wait for a few more minutes. We are already touching about 500 attendees and uh, we, we should uh, be able to have our peak in another uh, maybe uh, three, three, four minutes. Okay, good afternoon uh, participants. Uh, it is again my pleasure that uh, I'm connected with you uh, on this chapter two of uh, insolvency and bankruptcy versus IB uh, Surfacey Act. Mm, today we have added uh, uh, Mr. Shantanu T. Ray. Uh, he is uh, a senior partner uh, uh, in charge of our Mumbai office. He is also uh, responsible for uh, uh, Surfacey operations uh, in uh, the state of Maharashtra and Gujarat. And also, he's an insolvency professional, and he's an experienced enough to uh, handle. Shantanuji, can I have your attention, please? Uh, Shantanuji, can I have your attention, please? I think you are busy somewhere else. Kindly switch on your mic. Your mic is not, you are not audible. Uh, still, we are not uh, able I to think uh, I, I will I will connect with Santanuji separately. I will try and uh, resolve the connection issues. Uh, maybe maybe there is some issue at his end. Okay, okay. I think you need to check, Mr. Santanuji. You need to check your mic, which is not working. So we are uh, uh, already. It is uh, 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 started. The webinar is started. So uh, okay. Uh, so uh, friends, this. Uh, uh, a webinar today, as you know all, that the first uh, chapter was regarding the Surfacey Act, and uh, this chapter two uh, would be on insolvency and bankruptcy. And in between, I would be uh, comparing the uh, uh, IBC with the uh, Surfacey Law, uh, using my practical experiences in both these uh, uh, acts and where we practice across the country. Uh, uh, it is uh, may maybe at the uh, cost of repeating. Uh, uh, let me even say that uh, whatever I am saying, it is all because of my experience of handling 27,000 cases uh, under Surfacey Act, which has been given to us by uh, most of Indian banks, including all cooperative, Grameen, and uh, public sector banks and private sector banks. Uh, across country, we have uh, offices for uh, the Surfacey operations. Uh, when, when we call our Surfacey operations, let me be very clear that there is no official status under Surfacey Act for any agency like this. This is a kind of outsourcing model there where the bank outsource their, uh, some of the responsibilities, some of the duties to us. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, includes uh, uh, the even uh, uh, the taking physical possession, symbolic possession, uh, taking DM order, taking police help, and then watching uh, preservation and uh, protection of the assets uh, and, uh, of security interest. Uh, then uh, finding buyers and uh, conducting auctions and uh, selling. Uh, this is These are our scope of work. Of course, it differs from bank to bank. And uh, however, we have the infrastructure for all this uh, across country. So this is the one practical experience. The second practical experience is regarding AAA insolvency professionals LLP, where we have so far uh, uh, we we have been assigned 153 assignments of CIRP and liquidation by uh, mostly by banks and uh, financial institutions uh, across uh, 42 partners across the country. So these two uh, experiences collabed together, uh, we have prepared this uh, comparison. Uh, 
we had uh, uh, received more than about 100 questions in the last chapter one of the uh, uh, series. Uh, it was um, uh, very difficult to answer those questions in that uh, chapter one webinar. However, we have attended to those questions. As I said earlier also that this is my way of learning that in case any question is asked and I find a question, answer to that, that adds to my knowledge, uh, that adds to my, uh, 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 to my, my vocabulary of uh, answers. Uh, uh, so I would also attend to some of those important questions at the end of this uh, chapter two. Uh, now, I think uh, uh, we have to go to our uh, uh, main uh, uh, subject, which is insolvency, overview of insolvency. Uh, is he like? Is it possible, Ankit, that Mr. Shantanu is okay with? In case he is able to we hear can, us now, we can we can try. In case we can hear him now, Shantanu ji, uh, please try and speak something so that we understand if we can hear you. No, no still Santhani. we are not able to still, hear. You. Still not audible. Still not audible. Still not audible. Because yeah. see, I think uh, uh, maybe that Ankit simultaneously can try uh, uh, with you while I would actually continue with the uh, uh, with this main subject. Uh, so, uh, let me uh, share with you my screen now, and I would actually uh, be... Your screen is already uh, shared. Uh, your screen is already shared? Okay, I have to go to that screen only. So, uh, uh, friends, as I said that uh, the Chapter 2 uh, of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code with the with Surfacy Act is all about overview of uh, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code and comparison with Surfacy Act. Uh, when it is overview, so it would not be in-depth analysis of IBC. It would also not be dealing with the, uh, oh, the various uh, uh, difficulties that are We would be able to attend to, to the question. The format today that we have decided is again like after about 20-30 uh, minutes, uh, Mr. Shantanu T. Ray, uh, the senior partner based out of Mumbai, and uh, Mr. Ankit Goyal, uh, the uh, uh, managing partner of uh, Triple Evaluation. Uh, they both will be uh, looking into the questions that you would be posting in the chat box or question box. And they would be taking the questions in between. And also, if it would be possible and the time permits, we will also uh, bring that, uh, uh, see, uh, person asking questions live on the uh, webinar. Uh, so, uh, going ahead with the uh, insolvency and bankruptcy law, uh, let me under, let, see, let me try to first of all explain uh, why IBC was required in India, and in the meantime, I would also say uh, I would also uh, deal with why surface C was required in India. Uh, so, IBC, of course, like uh, if most of us are uh, uh, not new to IBC, then IBC basically wanted to. Uh, provide a comprehensive law and a single platform to deal with or resolve financial stress of business entities or otherwise. Uh, to assure early detection of financial stress or default, any creditor can report the default now. See, uh, see when you ask my practical experience, I feel the biggest uh, uh, tool uh, IBC brought uh, with it was the earliest detection of default which was not happening in our country, in our economy. Uh, reason being, uh, nobody was uh, uh, reporting any default. The banks had their own uh, issues, their own problems while reporting the uh, NPAs or defaults, and there was no other power with any other creditor. Now, uh, of course, the limit has now been increased from one lakh to one crore, but look at the last three years. Even if there is a default of one lakh, and the uh, the even the employees or workmen jointly can file an application to NCLT just by giving 2000 rupees as application fee and the application is also not very difficult and they can even uh, they can uh, bring that uh, employer uh, to the to the task either will, either the employer will pay or perish so this is the law uh, uh, this is the biggest tool of IBC which has created a, a different uh, business environment in country. And this business environment, in fact, was helping uh, uh, many uh, ethical uh, business persons because they were supplying goods to their customers and uh, they have now remedy. 
the only thing now uh, the everything want uh, is at it has to be documented completely uh, the default has to be documented completely in case there is a default so the uh, customer now the ultimate customer would not have any liberty to sit over invoices in case he is not agreeable to uh, any kind of supply price quality or quantity he would have to raise that dispute and unless the dispute is raised uh, there is the possibility that insolvency uh, can be initiated against him so that's a very very important uh, uh, part of the insolvency and bankruptcy which is the earliest detection of default to provide for time bound resolution for viable businesses uh, help for reorganizations and restructuring of the business of course so this some, is some comments some comments coming in on the sound quality so maybe we will we can try speaking a little louder into the microphone or keeping it closer to the mouth and then uh, maybe it, it is so, better for people uh, maybe that we take uh, another view because i am actually coming uh, uh, now i have kept this uh, mic uh, very close uh, so is it slightly better or it is, because see the otherwise uh, it net um, net the internet connection at my end uh, is good in case uh, most people are able to hear uh, in case most people are not able to hear then uh, the internet connection at my end may be bad however in case some people are not able to hear that may be an issue with the uh, the internet connection at their end i am uh, getting comments what... now that it is better now and we can continue so the uh, this uh, the the so the ibc was required in india it creates a collective platform of the stakeholders to enable them to take decisions about the future of uh, the distressed entity uh, it also provides uh, a collective decision to send uh, unviable uh, business to liquidation at the earliest to arrest any substantial loss in value Uh, to consolidate its uh, statute schemes orders into single debt uh, resolution process bifr cdr c sdr s4a and other debt resolution schemes were withdrawn repealed with the notification of ibc uh, now let us understand uh, the what was the basic uh, objectives of surface law in india uh, the it was uh, based on the Uh, committee reports uh, narsimham committee 1 narsimham committee 2 and another committee uh, these three committees in fact reviewed this surface law and uh, the basic objective of surface law was uh, as the as the law makers might have seen in the international banks that the banks and the financial institutions in india do not have power to take possession of securities uh, and sell them uh the uh, government of india wanted to provide such powers to banks and financial institutions to take to take over the security interest and sell transfer or etc to recover the dues so the objective of surface law was uh, uh, to recover the dues uh, it was not resolution at all nowhere we could see not even a judgment from any uh, uh, authority uh, that the uh, objective of surface was Uh, resolution the objective of surface was only recovery of dues uh, the slow pace of recovery of defaulting loans was uh, a, a trigger uh, mounting uh, npas was also a trigger so this law was brought to facilitate faster recovery of bad debts a uh, mounting level of npas also led to this decision that the central government wanted to, uh, our banks to foreclose Uh, the uh, defaulted cases uh, uh, quickly so that there is a uh, no further loss to the uh, asset uh, so this was the uh, the fastest possible uh, uh, kind of a law so uh, the when we saw this uh, blrc and we saw the key economic reforms uh, which was required for an insolvency law in this uh, country and the recommendations of blrc was as a, as a, as long as debt obligations are met equity owners have complete control and the creditors have no say in how the business is run so this was the running of this was the running of the business so the uh, the concept the the economic reform that was re, uh, desired that uh, in case the debt obligations are being met the equity shareholders equity holders or equity owners or the promoters they have full right to control the corporate debtor but in case the uh, the equity obligations if the debt obligations are not met 
then the creditors have all the right to uh, see how the business is being run and how the business should be run. Uh, the paradigm shift from debtor in control to creditor in control, of course, was the biggest uh, uh, the, uh, in, in IBC. Uh, when the default takes place, the control is supposed to be transferred to creditors. Equity owners should have no say. So these uh, economic reform, is, uh, which was basically recommended by BLRC for IBC, uh, the debtors under financial stress must be protected during resolution period. So therefore, the moratorium was introduced. Uh, otherwise, everyone will uh, uh, force recover or uh, attach or maybe many things which the corporate debtor is protected now. Asset stripping by promoters must be controlled before or after the default. So there are provisions which actually can stop asset stripping before the CIRP or even after the CIRP. So that is the reason that the IRP immediately has to take control on the assets of the company. The illegitimate transfer of wealth out of the company by controlling shareholders is also is, is, was considered as mis, in the small fees. So it was supposed to be controlled. Section 43, 45, or 66 was also uh, brought to the uh, IBC uh, only because of this uh, objective or because of this reform. Uh, other thing, the economy can make proposals to buy the company at a certain price along with a certain debt restructuring. So this is the, the uh, objective of uh, IBC that the others can also uh, come and uh, place a value for the company. See the further few objectives in case we see the to consolidate and amend the laws relating to renegotiation and insolvency resolution. Then when this IBC was being uh, drafted, it, it, it was supposed to be a time bound process. Of course, the time bound process is still there, except for the uh, over occupation of NCLT. Uh, and the maximization of the value of asset was also one of the objective to promote entrepreneurship to, to availability of credit and balancing the interest of all stakeholders, including alteration in the order of priority. So these lines are not fresh to uh, the participant, but then uh, maybe I wanted to come uh, uh, closer to the comparison. So now I will compare Surfaci. So now what was the objective in Surfaci? As I said, Narsiham uh, Committee 1 and 2 uh, as set up by RBI and uh, uh, Andhyaru Zina committee uh, reports in 1998 uh, le led to the Act. Surface Act first came as an ordinance in on 21st of June 2002 and then later on the ordinance became uh, act uh, because this was also a very very uh, fastest implementation I would say in country surface law was implemented very fast. Uh, uh, this was the uh, a recovery option uh, which was given to banks and financial institutions because the banks only had uh, at that time RDDBFI Act recovery of debts uh, by banks and financial institutions uh, Act 1993 was the only option so the DRT codes were already existing DR80s were already exist in existence but that was the uh, uh, codes they were providing decrees for recovery of the uh, debt and after the decree, then they, they were implementing the decree also. Uh, so, but the objective of this surface was that there should not be any intervention of the, any court or tribunal for recovery from security interest. Uh, the committee recommended that in case it is possible that the banks can recover their uh, security interest without even uh, uh, approaching any court or tribunal. So that was the objective was met by this. Uh, banks and financial institutions should also have an option to take over the management of defaulting companies. This was also one of the objectives kept by the uh, committees. Uh, it was also uh, placed in the Surface Act. However, this could not be practically implemented because of the uh, infrastructure was not available. Uh, the uh, managers were not uh, made uh, available. Uh, it, the total process of taking over and management was not defined unlike it was defined for asset reconstruction companies by RBI, but it was not defined for uh, the lenders, uh, banks and financial institutions. It was not defined. Uh, it was also recommended that the law should be implemented uh, immediately. Uh, the uh, protection of the borrower against any harsh action of the banks and financial institutions was also one of the objective. When banks would be given powers like this, uh, uh, which was a sweeping powers. Uh, it was also very clear that the 
uh, protection of the borrower against any harsh actions of the banks and financial institution. So the process which was defined in Surface Act and Surface rules was very, very meticulous. Uh, proper opportunity was given to borrowers to pay money at any stage, even before the sale of the asset. And the asset will definitely go back to promoters in case the money is standard, even just before the sale is, is completed, sale is concluded. Most of the notices that are supposed to be issued uh, are having multiple uh, uh, protection to a borrower. There are multiple ways that the notices can be served. And in case the notices are not able to serve, the courts are not giving any order. And it has been considered as the notice has not been properly served. And in her, there, are, there has been many court cases where uh, the entire process of surfacing has actually been reversed only because there was defaults in. Uh, uh, serving of notices, maybe the notice under section 13.2, maybe the uh, uh, notice after taking the possession of the security interest, then maybe even for before the sale is uh, uh, planned or even after the sale is concluded. So even if there is any flaw in service of notice to uh, borrower, uh, we have uh, various judgments where it has been uh, completely reversed. The entire process has been completely quashed. So the, the process of issuing notices and process of giving uh, opportunity to borrower is, is very, very clear. That cannot be compromised. Even Maria chemical case in Supreme Court uh, in 2003, it also said that all the processes has to be complied uh, very carefully. Otherwise, uh, the uh, opportunity may not be available to any borrower who is not getting any notices or who, who may have uh, arranged money uh, and who may uh, would like to uh, avoid the loss of uh, the asset getting taken over by banks. One so, of the questions like the, coming in, one of the questions yes, coming yes. in from Ankur Rastogi, uh, Mr. Rastogi is asking if uh, the transfer of management of borrower by the lender is possible under Safisi, and we, I think, discussed it in the chapter one of our presentation that it is possible under law, but practically, perhaps we have not seen this happen. So maybe you can deliberate a little about this uh, issue. Yes, I think the section uh, uh, 13, uh, uh, 4, sub clause B of Safisi Act deals with the taking over of management of the uh, borrower. Uh, by the banks and financial institution it is very clearly says then uh, the uh, section 15 deals with completely the process how the directors can be appointed how the existing directors can be removed how the business would be conducted and even the directors who would be appointed even in the, even the shareholders also would have a director there but the, those uh, directors uh, uh, would uh, not do anything without the written consent of uh, secured creditors all this law is there. Uh, this law is also there in the first part, which deals with asset reconstruction companies. However, the, in the case of asset reconstruction companies, the RBI came out with the guidelines how the ARCs can take over management of defaulting uh, borrowers. And that guidelines were there on place. And I also understand some of the ARCs have taken over the management. However, in this uh, enforcement of security interest part, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, section uh, uh, 13 to 19. And there it is, uh, uh, see the all the, the all the act is there, but no guidelines were given by RBI. The process given under section 15 is uh, uh, practically difficult because the banks and financial institutions, probably it would not be possible for them to decide who would be directors on this borrower's company, who would be the managers, because of the surface is also a kind of a, a surface act is applicable to proprietorship concerns. It is applicable to partnership firms, trusts, societies, private limited companies, limited companies, LLPs. It is applicable to all kinds of business entities. Uh, the how the managers would be appointed for running the business. Uh, what would be the quality? What would be the qualification? What would be the regulations of those managers that was not set up at that time as it is being set up now by IBC because there is a separate profession which is called IPs and there is a regulation how the IPs will work and there is a monitoring committee which is committee of creditors. All this is possible now. 
and also there are provisions like in case the company incurs losses regularly even after taking over uh, from the borrowers uh, who would meet these uh, losses and they were in, in the case of uh, surface act all these guidelines were not made banks were not clear in case they would not be able to sell how would they move forward then there was no conditions that in case they would not be able to sell or they would not be able, then there was a, they will go for winding up under the companies that that was not there <clears throat> so practically i have not seen uh, uh, any case under surface act where the management was, was taken over uh, for, for only for enforcement of security interest yes i have seen under arcs the arcs have taken over management maybe of course maybe uh, uh, in 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 the consent of with the with the promoters but even in uh, uh, even in this case uh, in the case of surface uh, i have seen some of the cases where the operational companies have been taken over by the banks under uh, under the physical possession or under the symbolic possession and then the uh, although the security would belong to the lenders and the management of the company would be again handed over to the promoters so with the with the control on the fund flow by the creditors that of course we have seen in some cases but we haven't seen any in those cases where the directors everything has been totally changed and replaced with the new set of management uh, this is the uh, this is my answer on this uh, uh, then uh, see both these uh, uh, law ibc and surface uh, basically were eyeing at the fast track uh, solution and the surface was eyeing at the uh, fast track recovery in ibc how we think that this is a fast track recovery because see uh, mostly the whenever there is a resolution uh, or restructuring proposal which comes to banks it, it is normally delayed but in case this uh, in case of cirp any lenders inertia or any lenders uh, uh, slow uh, uh, movement or any inertia means any any sleepiness of lenders during cirp would lead to liquidation so they would be forced to work within that time which is 180 or 270 or even more so that stipulated time is the uh, time where within which time they have to work in the see and everyone feels that invariably the economic uh, economically uh, liquidation is a inferior uh, as compared to a resolution the uh, under the ibc uh, the clarity on the insolvency framework uh, will attract investors to invest into stressed assets into stress distressed asset now in case you see after 3 years after more than 3 years there is a clarity the resolution applicant definitely can take over a company without uh, any of uh, hydra had popping up every day uh, supreme court has also said that it would be not possible for any ra to take over a company in case the hydra head would be popping up you cut one head and the other will pop up you cut another and then the other will pop up that means that you cut one laboratory another will pop up then you settle with the other one the other will pop up so that's what so the ra he will have to take over a company on a clean slate and not that the ra will look into the liabilities uh, again and again whenever somebody will approach so in fact we have seen various uh, uh, claims which have come after the resolution plan is approved by nclt uh, or resolution plan is approved by coc and there are many judgments now which says that the claims cannot be admitted after the resolution plan is approved by a committee of creditors uh, so the moratorium clauses in IBC is ensuring the uh, protection of the creditor and open floor for submission of a resolution actually should uh, be able to determine the market value. Uh, see, this is all uh, I'm, I'm saying uh, my, uh, uh, again, I would say uh, subject to practical difficulties that we all know whosoever is an insolvency professional or working under IBC regime, they also know that there are practical difficulties. So all these uh, uh, all these uh, objectives or all these uh, uh, key uh, uh, economic reforms or key uh, key uh, key thoughts may not be working in 100% cases, but yes, I am sure that all this is working at least for 90% cases. So the fast track uh, uh, under the IBC was also uh, assured because of various uh, uh, legal provisions in the. Uh, act of course the timelines were also there which has been compromised uh, by various orders um, the 
expeditious uh, disposal of applications was also is compromised. Uh, then the no injunction shall be granted by any court tribunal other than NCLT, NCLT Supreme Court. Uh, this has seen some little uh, 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 contravention. Otherwise, most uh, mostly this has been uh, uh, complied with. We haven't seen many other courts interfering into insolvency and bankruptcy matters. Uh, jurisdiction, bar on jurisdiction, section 231, no civil court shall have any jurisdiction. No injunction can be granted. Uh, he, here also we have seen success, whereas in the case of uh, uh, Surfaci, uh, we have seen orders coming from uh, Industrial Dispute Court, uh, Labor Court, uh, Local Tenancy Courts, Rent Control Courts, uh, Family Disputes Court, and various other courts. We have seen that the stays have been taken by the borrowers uh, with the objective of delaying the process of taking over by the um, lenders. Uh, so the civil courts will have no uh, jurisdiction on the matters having so all these provisions like the overriding provisions of 238 so this is also kind of matching with the uh, surface when we come to surface uh, the provisions of surface act can be invoked without making any application to any court or tribunal two two questions that might be relevant to this slide uh, one question is with respect to uh, contingent uh, contingent claims and contingent liabilities so uh, uh, the question uh, is uh, that uh, um, what what should uh, so i just uh, repeat I can, hello there can, can you throw uh, some light can you throw some light on contingent interest under both surface and ibc this is one question which can be taken up the other one is what is the position of disputed claims pending in court what is the effect of resolution plan on a pending suit in court of law? Like, see, first of all, uh, let me uh, uh, take up this issue. First of all, under surface, there is uh, uh, no contingent claims because the surface is primarily taking over the security interest, taking over the asset, taking over the stock, taking over the uh, machinery and selling it. So after selling it, the uh, total uh, uh, proceeds of sale will be allocated first to the cost of sales and cost of um, preservation. Then it will go to the secured creditors. In case it's a consortium of creditors, it will go to the consortium of creditors in their debt outstanding ratio. Uh, the workers due would be paid in 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 those uh, 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 cases in surface also. Uh, however, for the last 17 years that we have seen now, 17, 18 years that there, there have been there there has been. Uh, 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 it's numerous disputes regarding the uh, charge or attachment by government authorities against uh, uh, any uh, claim uh, which can be income tax, which can be excise, service tax, uh, customs, it can be even the uh, electricity dues. So there are various possibilities of attachments to under various laws. So uh, the multiple uh, high courts have given multiple uh, observation uh, opinions uh, in many cases it has been uh, observed that the state or the central government would have a priority over the secured creditors and in many cases where it has been proved that the at asset attached asset attached was prior to uh, the surface attachment in in those cases i have seen even the uh, state taxes or even the banks had also been given uh, prior uh, uh, right however that issue has now been settled uh, because from 24th of january 2020 the surface act has been amended now and under surface every uh, bank or financial institutions or nbfcs will require to register the transaction with central registry which is called sarse and once the transaction is registered with central registry and then uh, any uh, claim by any other authority after that transaction is registered, uh, the secured creditors will have priority. This is the latest amendment from 24th of January 2020. Now, uh, like since we are touching this point, uh, now this uh, even if uh, somebody has to attach the asset maybe income tax department custom department or any other department will have to attach the asset so all the attachments by any government department for any asset will have to be registered before sarsay 
See, I'll give you an example, like my participants, maybe it would be interesting for you all to know. See, let us understand uh, there are various ways of the registration of uh, the transactions before authorities. Let us first talk about the uh, incorporated entities where the uh, charges are registered under the Companies Act before ROC. So this is one where we can register charge of any on, on any asset. So that's a public information. Uh, so uh, then there is no other public information which actually will tell me whether this particular asset is charged to someone or not. However, in the case of land, I have the Patwari records or the seal there is a record where the lien is marked on the Patwari records. So that also can become a public information that there is a uh, registered mortgage and the lien is recorded in the uh, records of Patwari or Tasildar. Now, see, let us understand uh, what this Sibyl uh, uh, is doing. Sibyl is only recording default. Sibyl is not record. Sibyl is not recording the mortgages created. So the Sarsei, the central registry is now an, a, a, now a document that if any charge is to be created on any asset, may it belong to individual or or a proprietorship concern or partnership concern, trust, society, private limited, limited company. So any kind of entity, the any charge on any asset security interest will have to be registered with Sarsei. After 24th of January 2020, now it is not possible for any bank, NBFC or financial institution to invoke Sarsei action unless the charge is registered with Sarsei. This is very, very important for all of us to understand. Secondly, in case any attachment has to be enforced, any department who is attaching the asset will first of all register the transaction before the uh, before Sarsei. So when the attachment officer will go to register and the bank's charge is already registered there on that asset, then the attachment officer, whosoever department it belongs to, will have this uh, second charge, not the first charge. So the first priority now will give will be given to that particular person who has registered the charge uh, uh, at the first instance. And now it is open. The Sarsei is now open to uh, all charges. Suppose it's a private transaction between A person and between B person who is not a bank, financial institution, NBFCs or any kind of lender or any kind of financial assistance. So between two individuals, between two companies, in case there is a transaction of creating any mortgage or charge on any of the asset, they are also supposed to register with Sarsei. In case they register, they would be protected from any further charge being created on, an, on that asset by any bank or by any department. So in case they don't register, then they would also be exposed to a risk of somebody else getting their charge registered before that. So this is because I took this opportunity to explain to all of you how important this uh, Sarsei has become uh, in our life on a day-to-day -day basis. Any charge, any person, private transactions are also supposed to be registered only for protect protection. So in case it is not like, you see, even I am saying uh, this IU, IU is also one of the uh, such transactions, uh, but then the IU uh, and uh, uh, Sarsei, now both are, uh, uh, they're almost doing the same situation, but the IU is also doing transactions which are unsecured, uh, whereas Sarsei is only doing the transactions of secured creditor or a creation of charge or creation of lien. And the uh, IU is even for unsecured transactions, even for supply of goods or services, even for booking of a home, booking of a flat. IU is basically for everyone. So IU. Sibyl, ROC, and Sarsei. So these are the four situations that we actually have to understood very clearly which one is supposed to be uh, complied with whenever there is any transaction of raising a credit, uh, taking a loan, uh, uh, creating a security interest. So it has to be, or, or even in the case of defaults where it will be, get registered. So when we come back to surface, I think Ankit, this answer is okay. And I see like, should I take up this contingent claims also now or later? As, as per your wish, if you feel that you've already covered it in the later part of the presentation, you can defer it. Uh, I just thought that it so is uh, linked to this slide that is mentioned. Contingent claims, in fact, is a very, very large issue. Uh, I have a plan of uh, coming up uh, with a, uh, a complete webinar, which would be insolvency and bankruptcy versus uh, the tax authorities 
or various other attachments, uh, which also will cover PMLA, which will also cover the electricity attachment or SEBI attachment. So, because this is a, a very large presentation, so it will be very difficult to say that the contingent claims are uh, something that can be handled within another webinar. So that will be handled separately. However, this was related to the surface and surface. So I thought that it is better that we should take up it now. In surface also, the uh, authorized officer is uh, uh, even scale four officer, which is of uh, chief manager scale. Uh, they can invoke, uh, one officer can invoke surface provisions. Only 60 days notice is required under section 13.2 of the act before the asset is taken over physically by the lenders. Only 30 days notice is required before the asset is sold. This is as per rule eight and nine of surface rules. No access to court at this stage of the notice under section 13.2. Access to DRT only against the actions taken by the lenders under section 13.4, that is physical takeover or taking over management. Surface provisions to override other laws, section 35 clearly says that it overrides other laws. DRT to dispose of the applications in 60 days, extendable to four months. Of course, uh, these, these, these are subject to the uh, availability of uh, capacity with the court. So this is being compromised as it is. we have seen, it is being compromised in IBC. So this is all because of the capacity issues or because we can say uh, because of the issues of uh, uh, over uh, uh, a number of applications, over more than what they expected. So another common feature in both these laws is that the IBC and the surface in both these uh, laws were implemented uh, at lightning speed, uh, because we we have seen IBC in case. Uh, um, I think most people here who would actually have the knowledge of IBC. It started in 2014 when this government sworn in. So in the very first budget, the finance minister said that they would be forming a BLRC. Uh, so banking law reforms. Uh, so this BLRC, Bankruptcy Law Reforms Committee, it was decided uh, uh, like on July that they will form. In August, it was formed. And it November, uh, it started work in the chairmanship, Dr. T. K. Vishwanathan, uh, who was the Secretary General of 15th Lok Sabha. Uh, final report was uh, submitted by BLRC in uh, November 15, and uh, then, uh, like while this uh, uh, report was being uh, made, or the Joint Parliamentary Committee was uh, discussing the report, the code was also uh, being drafted. Uh, while the report was the report pres was presented in the Lok Sabha on in April 2016, uh, in May itself, the entire code, IBC was notified the entire code was notified on in 20 on 28th of may 2016 however the cirp uh, started uh, because different different sections were notified on different different dates uh, in the first december 2016 was the date when the cirp uh, in fact was notified in case we see this uh, surface implementation it was also uh, it was also the government acted upon the suggestions of uh, committees, the committees, as I already said, Narsimha one, two. Then the third is the, uh, then first of all, it was immediately introduced as a surface ordinance in 2002, which was promulgated by President of India on 21st of June 2002. Uh, then a bill was introduced in the parliament, which was not passed. And immediately after that, the president promulgated another ordinance uh, that was on 21st of August 2002. It was uh, government thought it is very important that this law is required in the country. And finally, the Surface Act uh, uh, was passed on 17th December 2002. However, based on the ordinance, this law was effective from 21st of August 2002. So this was a lightning speed uh, in this case also. So like uh, uh, lightning speed, when I say, uh, for the purpose of IBC, there were a lot of infrastructure which was created, uh, like IBBI and the insolvency professional agencies. We have three insolvency professional, 3,000 insolvency professional entities, 100 and plus IU information utilities, one registered valuers, registered valuer organization, registered valuer entities. So all this infrastructure was created for IBC uh, and the uh, the National Company Law Tribunal, of course, it was uh, constituted under the Companies Act in 2016, 
uh, immediately after that in in uh, december 2016 uh, the uh, the the uh, and nclt was given this additional responsibility uh, as an ad adjudicating authority however the adjudicating authority for individuals partnership firms actually of trust it was the drt and drt drat see the adjudicating authority for surface act was already existing in the country it was it was the adjudicating authority for uh, the rdd bfi act which was recovery uh, a recovery uh, of debt of banks and financial institutions act uh, 1993 so the drt the debt recovery tribunals were functioning presently we have 39 benches on 22 locations edrt is also there so still there is a capacity issues in drts and these capacity issues are uh, these capacity issues are very very uh, serious uh, for the time being and we uh, as i said in the chapter 1 also that the government is trying to uh, somehow handle this uh, uh, by way of increasing the limit from 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs so that there should be some and also uh, some other efforts are being taken recruitment everything is being taken so the adjudicating authority for surface is also drt and drat uh, the presently the uh, this uh, uh, the rdd bfi act is also the name is changed uh, to the recovery of debt and bankruptcy act uh, 1993 uh, with effect from 1st december 2019 now this drt would have jurisdiction for uh, rdb act surface act and jurisdiction for individuals and bankruptcy of personal grantors to corporate debtors where the corporate debtor is not under ibc so the court the jurisdiction now is increasing whereas the capacity has to be seen uh, that difficulty is there so whenever we talk about the practical part of it practically uh, various situations i have seen practically the banks have been taking decisions for invoking ibc uh, only because the drt uh, may be a slow process as compared to ibc uh, now the ibc is also not uh, somehow delivering that fast as it was expected the situation will change now because the limit has now increased from one lakh to one crore and further it may be even one part of the the fresh the fresh defaults may be suspended for another six months or maybe for one year we are we are waiting for the uh, ordinance any day the ordinance can come and uh, uh, then uh, we will see uh, the how much relief would be uh, given to the uh, I, the the nclt benches and then we will see that some good results would be coming so I one of the questions uh, so one yes, of the please. questions that has come in is uh, whether increase of rupees 20 lakhs to drt is applicable for a recovery application filing only or surface appeals as well uh see the one that it is applicable for the recovery uh it is applicable for the recovery applications which are supposed to be filed under rdb act second as far as the recovery is concerned the applications that are being filed to uh, drt is not for recovery the applications which are being filed to uh, uh, the to uh, uh, drt uh, is if it is by the borrower then the borrower will have some anguish and borrower will seek a kind of an injunction from drt and there it would not be really relevant whether the value of the security interest is this or that so in that situation uh, if the uh, surface uh, uh, the limit you see is applicable from 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs and that would be the outstanding amount uh, surface also it is amount 20 lakhs and rdb also it is 20 lakhs and it is uh, uh, but however the surface cases are not for recovery surface cases are for various other matters like uh, the notice has not been served uh, like the uh, reply to my representation or my objections has not been given uh, stay of the uh, physical possession uh, stay of the sale the sale process is not uh, compliance uh, compliant uh, the sale is being given to somebody who actually is offering much lesser i have a better customer so these are the applications that are being filed under surface uh in some of the applications even the amount is also not really relevant so uh, to, to my understanding is 
uh, it is uh, under surface although the limit of 20 lakhs is applicable but under surface uh, in case there is any anguish on the process then there would not be any limit under surface act if there is any anguish on the process then there will not be any limit because in case we also try to increase that limit from 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs because there is no limit of 10 lakhs also in surface surface there is only limit of 1 lakh the surface limit is only 1 lakh if the uh, if the uh, total outstanding amount is 1 lakh or it is 20% of the total outstanding less than more than 20% so in surface this 10 lakh limit is not there so surface cases uh, I would go to uh, DRT without any limit. Uh, <clears throat> that like IBC is a sure. two-stage process. First, it is any any Shantanuji, are you reading any questions? Uh, I am reading one question uh, here. Yes, uh, please. There is a question that uh, what is the uh, you know? Can you elaborate on the sale of property? under surface e when borrower is under liquidation what is the provision as well as any judicial precedence on this so mm. basically his question is whether uh, i guess <laughs> relating to uh, section 52 i would assume of ibc uh, yes uh, so this can be another, section another, of, yeah, another yes. question another question related to this is whether uh, a surface prop a property which has already been taken possession or acted on by the bank under surface can be taken over by an rp if the company uh, starts insolvency process and uh, this is also uh, <clears throat> yes this is these are relevant questions very very relevant yeah. questions so let me first attend to the question which has been read by uh, mr shantanu t ray uh, so the his question is uh, what would happen in the case of uh, liquidation or winding up so we have uh, various cases uh, in in various high courts uh, or even DRATs uh, that the uh, company is under winding up and the secured creditor has not relinquished its security interest in favor of the official liquidator. Secured creditor is enforcing the security interest by using the uh, surface. E. So in in this scenario, once this security security interest has not been relinquished in favor of the official liquidator under winding up under the companies act then the surface is a normal process the lenders will have to invoke surface for taking symbolic possession physical possession and for sale so uh, the surface law would be applicable to all those assets which has not been relinquished to the official liquidator and which is being invoke which is being sold by the uh, secured creditor under surface so this is the answer but the second uh, uh, question which ankit you uh, have read and that is uh, what happens in case the property is already in possession of the bank under surface so we have uh, a, a case by the name of the quantum quantum limited it was a mumbai nclt case where the in fact the property was also sold under surface and cirp started however the buyer under surface act only paid 25 percent and the rest of the money was pending and the sale was not concluded so it was held by the nclt uh, mumbai which also had tested the nclat that the unless the sale is concluded the surface action will stay and all those assets which are already taken over by the banks under surface act will be taken over by irp rp very clear so if there is any doubt on this i can take up further elaboration on this but this is very clear that unless the sale is conclusive if the sale is concluded then it is over and then the sale has to be concluded before the initiation of the cirp then it is over so there are other cases also i definitely can bring those cases because i have read those cases where the uh, sale process was in process the sale was in between and it was considered not conclusive so irp will take over any other question because we are actually moving on to another kind of a chapter so uh, we already we can have move on and we, we can we can move on and uh...
Uh, I think the idea is there are a lot of questions, so maybe we can try and spare some time uh, at the end of your presentation to have all the questions uh, which are not answered mm -hmm. in your presentation by then, because otherwise it will take more time. We can maybe yes. spare so, some time at uh, the end. Who can initiate? Uh, uh, see, like when we say that who can initiate CIRP, so that's also with the objective of comparing with the Surface Act. Who can initiate Surface and who can initiate uh, CIRP? See, for CIRP, any bank, NBFCs, or any other private financiers who have given loan, maybe secured or unsecured credit card or personal loan, they can initiate CIRP. Persons who have supplied material, like normal vendors, or any, who or or have provided any service and have not been paid operational creditors employees or workmen they are also called operational creditors central government state government or any local authority who have to recover some tax they are also called operational creditors the company or person itself who think that it cannot repay its debt corporate debt so these are all kind of uh, uh, persons who can initiate cirp uh, so the ibc is basically for everyone whosoever is not getting paid Whereas the surface is not like this. Surface is only for, first of all, the three conditions, as I explained in chapter one, uh, I, even at the cost of the repetition, I would say these are very, very important to understand. First of all, there has to be a secured creditor who is eligible. Who are eligible secured creditors? Banks, financial institutions, ARCs, and some specified NBFCs. So these are only eligible secured creditors who can invoke surface action. Second, what are the security interest? Security interest has to be eligible under Surface Act. So the security interest should be hypothecation charge, uh, and uh, the uh, see like uh, what is not a security interest? What is not a security interest is pledge, uh, where the uh, possession is already with the uh, lender, lien. In the case of lien, also surface is not applicable because the lien is adjustable under the contract act. So uh, then there are specified transactions where the uh, surface is not applicable. Then the third is what kind of financial assistance the surface can cover. So there are some kind of financial assistances which are not covered under surface. So first of all, uh, the surface, one part of the surface is that it is applicable to a very specific transaction. But the second part of this surface is that it is applicable to much larger uh, part of the society because it is applicable to individuals for home loan. It is applicable to all loan against property. It is applicable to all uh, specific loans against any asset. It is applicable to individuals, partnership firms, actuals, trust societies. So all kind of business entities. Whereas the IBC is only and only applicable for the time being to uh, companies, LLP, and other incorporated entities. Uh, also on individuals who have given personal guarantee to, ex, uh, to secure any loan. So in this case, in the IBC, we are supposed to file an application uh, before NCLT uh, application can be filed by a financial creditor in case there is a default of one crore now. Uh, from 24th of March, 2020, it, it is one crore now. The, the the few things that we have to prove in the uh, before the tribunal is that there is an existence of debt, there is a disbursement of debt, there is an occurrence of default. In this case of financial creditor, there is no need of giving a prior notice, and the name of the IRP is also supposed to be proposed. Application can be accepted even if the dispute is pending. So this is the application by financial creditor, and because it is an overview, so in this overview we are actually not dealing with the nitty gritty of various applications. So then applications, uh, uh, continuing the application, the application can be filed by operational creditors. Also, as I said, a supplier of goods or services, workmen, employees, government authorities, local authorities, state authorities, every, everyone can file a application before NCLT if the default is one crore now. Okay. Then we actually have to prove everything same, but only one additional thing. One is additional existence of debt. Then is the uh, disbursement of uh, debt. That means the goods were supplied. Then occurrence of default. That the money was not paid as per the stipulated agreed terms of payment. Then the, la the very, very important is existence of no dispute. There should not be any dispute between the supplier 
between the service provider see this is the uh, operational creditor section nine applications 10 days notice is required in this case in the case of operational creditor which is not required in the case of financial creditors irp name may be proposed may not be proposed otherwise nclt will appoint the one from the list which is provided by ibbi to them after the ibbi is getting an abandonment application uh, the company can also uh, company can also apply now since this has been come first one crore from the fact from 24th of march 2020 the company must have to say that yes the company has committed a default of more than one crore application can be filed by the company or any authorized member means shareholder or partner cfo of the company can also file md of the company can also file any person who is in charge of the operations resources or control and supervision of the financial affairs of the com company can file this application name of the irp has to be proposed now when we say this let, let us now take the uh, see what is required in surface C. to invoke surface C, we don't need to file any application to invoke surface C, the bank internally has to just give a notice under section 13 2 and that notice simply says that this is the total debt this is the security interest this is this description of the asset this is the description of the total outstanding and these are the evidences and now you have to pay within 60 days in case you will not pay within 60 days then i will take action under section 13 4 which are taking physical possession or taking over the management of the company. So these are very actions, like there are four actions on the Surface Act. So these are the actions that we'll take. And the, the other is like we can even recover from the central debtors in case the asset which is hypothecated to a secured creditor is a, is, is a movable asset. Uh, in that case, the, uh, in the, in the case of movable assets, uh, the first of all, the possession has to be taken if it is a stock or in the case of receivables the bank can even say that uh, i would write to all the debtors that whatever is money payable to the company that money should be paid to the bank because the bank has enforced section 134 uh, c uh, section 134 uh, uh, c uh, on this company or in this borrower so all these uh, customers must pay to the bank rather than paying to the borrower so that's again like one of the action which is prescribed under section 13.4 under section under other of the surface act so no application is required simply the internal decision of the bank in case it's a consortium then 66 percent people will have to decide to take surface action 66 percent of uh, the uh, people uh, have it based on the debt outstanding not sanctioned but debt outstanding based on that debt it would be decided by the bank and one notice is issued so the no court the basic objective of the surface law is met that without intervention of any court or any tribunal or any authority the bank can invoke surface surface take over the possession of the property and sell it there is no court in between where an application is supposed to be filed all the applications which are being filed by uh, all the applications which are being filed by uh, the, uh, in the in the drt most of these applications are filed by the borrowers uh, to take some kind of uh, relief or uh, in case of any uh, dispute regarding priorities of uh, charges those are also going to drts or in case of any dispute regarding attachment of assets those are also going to drts so in case of any dispute regarding sale those are also going to the uh, drt in case anyone who actually have purchased an asset under surface act and is not getting physical possession they are also going to drt so but then the application is not being filed by the bank for invoking applications are mostly filed by the other parties who are somehow aggrieved by some of the actions of the bank or even banks are also somehow feeling uh, that some decision is required because of some disputes so this is the basic difference between the nclt and uh, the uh, surface C. very big difference so when the appointment of the interim professional resolution professional is done in IBC, uh, NCLT uh, will assure the notice to the corporate debtor after hearing objections and arguments, the application would be either admitted or dismissed by NCLT. Uh, this part is also the uh, basic principles of uh, natural justice is applicable. Although it was not mentioned in the 
uh, original IBC law or even the rules, uh, but the principles of natural justice are applicable. So no uh, applications are being accepted nowadays till the time it is assured that the notice has been given to the corporate debtor. Uh, the IRP proposed by financial creditor, operational creditor, or the corporate applicant can be appointed if they found no disciplinary action is pending against them. If the RP is IRP is not proposed by OC, then NCLT can pick up one uh, insolvency professional from the list provided by IBBI. IRP will start the CIRP uh, uh, with the public announcement and invite claims from the um, uh, uh, lenders. See, here in this case, um, uh, the bank can, at the most, bank can decide about appointing any agency uh, who are working under surface like us at this stage when the bank gives notice to uh, the bank gives notice to the borrower that you deposit money within 60 days if the money is not received immediately after that the bank will start uh, action under section 13.4 and uh, will start taking over the physical possession will make an application uh, to dm in case required when i'm saying it in case required it means it so under surface if the uh, if the promoters are not resisting, if the asset is such that I can easily take possession for, if it is the only plain uh, uh, plot uh, plot of land where anyone can go and uh, show that the physical possession is taken and can post some kind of board there that uh, the physical possession has been now taken over by a bank, so and so. So uh, these are all those kind of possessions where the resistance is not there, so DM order is not required. So first bank gave a notice of 60 days. After that, bank says that for 13-4, the 13-4 notice that we are we would be taking physical possession of this property and so on so date. Then bank can go and bank's officer can go or bank can even appoint agencies like us. Then they can actually go and take the possession of the property without even DM assistance. DM assistance is required only in those cases where uh, the resistance is there in handing over the physical possession. See, appointment of IRP, uh, as far as the IBC is concerned, is basically for various objectives. The objective, number one, is to take control of the corporate data, to take control of the fund flow, to take control on the uh, operations, to take control on the assets, all the documents. See, let us understand the structure of IBC. The structure of IBC is that once the CIRP starts, once the CIRP starts, what there are there are only two possibilities one a resolution plan is approved or the liquidation will happen in case of resolution plan and uh, not uh, the promoters will take a resolution plan because that is only possible in some of the concerns where msm is there but the law has been structured in such a manner that once the entire organization has been taken over by irp and it is being run by irp so there should not be anything later on that the RA is supposed to ask from the old management. So the structure is that it is a complete transfer from promoters to IRP and from IRP to RA. So this is the complete structure. So if, if an RA, IRP is working, RP is working, RP or the IRP has to make sure that he has taken full control of the corporate data and he would be able to hand over the full control to a stranger RA who actually is coming from totally coming from outside. He is not connected with the company or company's uh, promoters. So he will only know you as an RP. He will take everything from you. He will take title deeds from you. He will take all the passwords from you. He will take email control from you. He will also take, he will also take uh, all these files, all the vouchers, all the income tax records, all the excise records, all the GST records, because see, the company is a going concern. If the company is totally, today is in CIRP, somebody is taking it over as RA, that company will continue. All the assessments of the company will continue. All the assets will continue. So, so the IRP is supposed to take complete control. So that complete control is presently in, in most of the cases, it is deficient. So that is one reason that the RAs in this country, reservation applicants in this country, are not still feeling comfortable that they actually will be able to handle this company because the, most of the information 
the secrets of the businesses are not with the IRP. So in most of the cases of litigation, in the most of the cases of arbitration, I don't think the uh, IRP or the RP would be having that kind of information, which actually would become finally a case for, to win the arbitration. In various other cases, the documents which are actually required for continuing the company, that those are not available with the uh, uh, IRP, RP. So this is where I wanted to give caution to all, all the participants who are IPs that taking control of the uh, control and custody of the corporate data is a very, very important part of our profession. Uh, rather than uh, taking any further decision, like all other decisions are now almost given to the committee of creditors. Our only role, our only role is to take control, custody and run the organization. Most of the other decisions are with the COC. For running the organization, for taking custody control, for handing over to an RA, you actually have to think about, about it. RA will not have access to old shareholders. RA will not have access to the old promoters or directors, neither they would cooperate. Why they would cooperate? So IRP, RP has to take everything in hand, everything, so that it is passed on to RA. So the powers of the board of directors are suspended and they probably stop unless the otherwise see one the situation is that they would uh, uh, they would probably resist or in case they are not resisting then they would uh, stop uh, giving any showing any interest in this uh, cd officers and the management of the cd will report to irp the so this is all uh, the company will be going concern this is all okay uh, constitution of committee monitoring of the assets so then is the moratorium the moratorium is also a thoughtful process. Uh, in Surfacey, uh, when this uh, section 13.2 notice is given for 60 days, then there is a restraint on sale of the secured assets, not other. There is a restraint on sale of the secured assets without the consent of the uh, secured creditor. I believe even otherwise, if the asset is mortgaged, uh, and it cannot be sold by the promoters because the title deeds or other documents would be deposited with the bank. So nobody would be a buyer. However, it is specifically provided that the assets would not be sold after section 13.2 notice is given. So the moratorium is actually in the, uh, basically to prohibiting uh, falling uh, uh, scenario uh, in case we don't uh, restrict the uh, everything uh, which is falling uh, adversely, every creditor will come and strangulate the corporate debtor for payment. Every kind of person will come for attachment. Uh, every kind of person will come for uh, uh, closure of the supplies, the essential um, supplies. So this is what is called moratorium that while the IRP is uh, functioning, there will be a moratorium. So uh, the the creditors, any kind of creditors will not pounce upon the corporate data since the company is now publicly it is going uh, under insolvency process. So they would not pounce upon. So they would now wait and IRP, RP will decide with committee of creditors what to do. So this kind of moratorium is there in uh, surface also. Uh, <clears throat> effect of moratorium under IBC, uh, I think we can skip. Uh, because I only uh, can say this is a, a very, very important uh, part of IBC. And now there is another addition which recently have happened into this, uh, the clause which has been added in moratorium that all licenses permissions uh, would not be canceled during the uh, moratorium period. Uh, this is uh, also very, very important. But then one situation that I wanted to just highlight so we have seen two moratoriums, one moratorium that under section 14 and the other moratorium that we have seen in under section 35 during liquidation process. Uh, let us read the first paragraph, the section 14.1a. <clears throat> the institution of suits or continuation of pending suits or proceedings against the corporate debtor, including execution of any judgment decree or uh, order of order in any court of law, tribunal, arbitration panel, or other authority. See, when we read uh, the same clause under section 35 in the liquidation process, it is the word 
or continuation of pending proceeds are, are missing. So that means that in during CIRP, even the existing uh, suits or proceedings would be stayed. Whereas in the liquidation process, uh, the only fresh institution of suits would not take place, whereas all existing pending suits would continue. So we have seen in various liquidation cases that we are handling that once liquidation starts, all kinds of proceedings starts. Arbitration proceedings starts, even the taxation proceedings also starts. Any kind of otherwise suits which are pending uh, for other things are also starting. So the liquidation is also considered to be uh, litigation, like the uh, because during liquidation we have seen a lot of litigation which actually will uh, again uh, surface because the continuation of pending the suits were uh, there only till the CIRP. During liquidation, the continuation of pending suit is not there as a moratorium. So uh, this effect of moratorium is everyone knows now because in case we uh, kind of uh, contravene moratorium, uh, that is important that in case any officer of the corporate director contravene moratorium, then there is an imprisonment of three to five years uh, under section 74 uh, and a fine of one to three lakhs of rupees. Any person of financial creditor or operational creditor, there is also like even if even if the financial creditors are uh, uh, not uh, complying the uh, section 14, then they also can face imprisonment of one to five years and also fine from one to five one, one lakh to one crore. Officers of the court, uh, CD or uh, the or C, uh, officer of the corporate debtor or corporate debtor, a creditor, or any other person, anyone who is contravening, there is a one to five years and one to one crore. Uh, this is the, the contravention of moratorium. Now the constitution of committee is uh, uh, one part, uh, which is the uh, key for IBC resolutions, IBC solutions. Uh, there is no such committee under, there is no such committee under uh, surface only the internal committees of uh, banks uh, they would decide about various actions to be taken so in case of uh, joint bank multiple banking or in case of consortium banking then uh, they collectively will take decision in a meeting like this in case 66 percent of the outstanding debt uh, give consent for uh, action under section 13.4 uh, then only the surface action can be taken. Otherwise, surface action cannot be taken. Uh, so the there is no committee for individual banks because their internal committees would only work. They would take a decision based on the options available in case they feel that the uh, uh, this in most of the cases in case more the uh, security interest is there. So the asset is there. So I think the, in most of the cases the bank will take uh, action. Uh, even if the property is uh, worth 5 lakh, the outstanding amount is more than 1 lakh, property is worth 2 lakhs, the surface action can be taken. So on the surface action, this 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs is not applicable. The bank will not go to DRT. Bank will simply issue notice under section 13.2. Even if the, the only thing which is required is that the outstanding amount of debt must be more than 1 lakh. And there should be a security interest means that there should be a security interest on any asset then the surface action would be invoked 10 lakhs 20 lakhs of rupees is not applicable because it is applicable to surface action where the drt application is not even required it is the bank they have to decide it's a very uh, uh, important part how to constitute a committee uh, the irp identify the financial creditors and constitute a creditors committee ex including related parties. Operational creditors in case uh, their aggregate debt is 10% or uh, of the total debt are allowed to attend meetings of the committee but do not have any voting power. In case there are no financial creditors, then the committee of creditors will be formed out of operational creditors. Each decision of the creditors committee require a 51% majority vote unless otherwise provided in the code. Most of the important decisions require 66%. I have a chart uh, in the subsequent uh, uh, 
uh, slides, which actually gives the complete picture of where 51%, where 66% is required. Decision of the creditors of committee are binding on the corporate debtor and all its uh, creditors. Binding means like uh, if it is approved by, uh, if it is approved by the uh, NCLT. IRP would be appointed as RP or it would be replaced by any other RP. That is also the COC's job. So I have collated uh, various uh, regulations and various sections where the committee, uh, where the rights and powers of the committee, rights and powers of the committee are uh, discussed. Uh, so what I'm trying to say, uh, see this uh, various, uh, uh, various such uh, uh, I have listed like uh, I can actually go ahead very quickly uh, the powers of a committee of creditors appointment of RP or replacement of RP authorize uh, RP to raise interim finance extension of CIRP period beyond 180 days or even beyond 270 days now Exclusion in CIRP period because of the disruption in CIRP process up to 330 days, but that's not exclusion, that is extension now. Permitting withdrawal of the application already admitted under section 7, 9, or 10, which is section 12A. Again, the COC is required. Eligibility criteria for resolution applicants, the COC. Approval of the resolution plan as COC with 66% to permit the resolution applicant to make payment of overdue amount to be eligible, to be eligible under section 29A. COC power and to initiate the liquidation process, COC power, to authorize any person to attend COC meeting, again, COC power, to ratify expenses incurred on public announcement, to ratify fee of the IRP, IPE, other professionals, and reimbursement of expenses, to approve reduction in the notice period, COC, modify the quorum, COC, approval for sale of assets other than ordinary course of business only unencumbered up to book value of 10%. This needs a voting share of 66% COC. Approval of other expenses forming part of CIRP costs. Ratify the expenses incurred by the applicant on or by IRP and to reimburse the applicant to fix fee of the RP, RPE and other expenses under regulation 34 to fix the fee to be paid to the professionals regulation 34 to take a list of creditors from the, the resolution professional in the first meeting to ask the resolution professional to call a COC meeting, to get an option to attend COC meeting, to get minutes of the meeting, to get information memorandum, to get additional information. So I'm trying to say one thing. Then there are uh, like RFRP, there are form G, there are uh, eligibility criteria, there are bid evaluation metrics, uh, the uh, voting access, and then section 28 items, uh, everything uh, then to receive resolution plans which are compliant to IBC along with the details of the available transactions. So to uh, understand the liquidation value, uh, this uh, uh, to make best estimate of liquidation cost before this, uh, regulation 39C, 39B, 39C. Again, all these uh, section 28 items like raising all these section 28 items. So I just wanted to say, quickly to all of you that now over a period with the kind of decisions that we are getting from Supreme Court from NCLAD, the power of RP or IRP is, is nothing. It is only an administrator. So I am only trying to say, Ankit uh, Shantanuji, in case you can interact yes. here with a little bit of, uh, see, the, what I'm trying to say is, what are the powers now with the an insolvency professional who is working as IRP or who is working as I, uh, uh, working as uh, uh, RP. So each and every power has actually gone to uh, each and every power has gone to COC. The biggest power with the RP is to run the business. Mm. The biggest power with the RP is to monitor the fund flow, to take control and custody of the corporate data to take control and custody of the investments, records, passwords, email IDs, tenders, each and every document which is an asset for the company is supposed to be taken. Otherwise, for everything else, it is the COC. 
so i think uh, uh, see uh, mr shantanu has handled maybe more than 10 cases uh, for cirp uh, do you really think that the rp has any power except to run the business except to uh, uh, just uh, uh, see uh, how the purchases has to be made how the sales has to be made and that also under reporting to coc <clears throat> yes sir uh, uh, frank uh, honestly the entire power balance here is in the hand of the coc though rp has the responsibility to meet all the deadlines and uh, there are certain uh, uh, you know roles that the rp has to do financial uh, or of ultimately you know passing the budget in a company where there is uh, no cash flow as such or it's a company is in a operating loss uh, is overwhelmingly with the coc and even for mundane matters which i, I rp is bound to do uh, the coc's uh, support is required so that is one of the uh, problem as well as uh, good you can say because then the coc is always in the loop so you are doing everything very transparently with the uh consent of the coc so my view is it's a uh, it's a cooperative approach has to be there with the coc and the I, irp or rp uh, but the coc is also need to understand that there are certain things which have to be done which they have to support like you know interim finance becomes a very big problem even today sir you would also know that uh, interim finance is a very big problem uh how do we run the company if there is no uh, you know money uh, yes, yes. so that, that it has to be a very collaborative approach between the coc as well as the rp in most cases i have not seen promoters very cooperative yeah in most cases that i have handled the promoters have not been very cooperative at all getting so, data is like, a very uh, big problem what we uh, what we are trying to uh, conclude here is that the uh, rp uh, is only an administrator rp is only responsible to preserve the assets protect the assets run the company keep it as a going concern and even if for all this right. uh, rp has to raise some funds the rp will go to cir pay the say the uh, coc so uh, the otherwise each and every power for the process is with the coc uh see here at this level uh, at this point like we i can even discuss there are certain um, issues uh, which has been settled in ibc in the last more than 3 years now uh, but couple of issues which are still uh, uh, like uh, kind of uh, very very disturbing issues one such issue is like uh, when we we are appointed as uh, uh, irp or rp for a company having no asset so we are experiencing that in case of such companies first we see that the claims are filed by the creditors even the public sector banks or even the private banks when they come on the coc and they see that there is no asset in this company now then they withdraw their claim when they withdraw their claim then uh, the coc was constituted and then finally they have started withdrawing their claim because in case they continue in the cirp process they probably think that they will have to contribute for the cirp cost so they would like to withdraw and then the finally the company is available only with the rp and the rp is handling that company and even if the resolution is passed for the liquidation of the company then everything uh, requires some expenditures to be incurred and we have not seen so far any relief from uh, this uh, scenario that the company doesn't have any asset and the nobody is there to fund nobody is there to fund so that's a very very serious serious scenario so far uh, most of the other situations are getting controlled uh, we uh, we are also uh, very very uh, cautious still we are very very eagerly waiting for a decision of of the supreme court whether this uh, in a resolution plan uh, the allocation of resources available has to be distributed to the creditors considering the priority of their in security interest and also considering the value of the security interest or not because this dbs bank limited singapore uh, 
uh, that case uh, uh, which Anclat has held that the section 30 subsection 4 is prospective and it cannot be applied to all those resolution plans which are uh, already approved uh, before uh, August 2019. That actually means that, of course, it is prospective. What is like, let us understand, but that matter is pending with the Supreme Court. Right, right from the day one, we've been doing like this that any person who actually has a more security value will get more in a resolution plan and also in the liquidation value in, during liquidation. So during liquidation, also we are allocating exactly. First of all, the value of their security interest we are allocating, and then the, the surplus amount is being allocated to uh, all the creditors. So, so this uh, under the surface yet also there are many things which are still uh, uh, undecisive, which are still a very very big burning issues. Uh, one such uh, uh, a few of the surface issues uh, which I can handle, I can say that the tenancy issue is a very very large issue. Like the most of the borrowers are creating tenancy. And most of the Supreme Court and High Court and the DRAT order says that the tenant interest has to be protected, and because this the Surface Act has got no power to evict a, a bona fide tenant. So now the bona fide tenant has become a very big uh, factual issue, and in most of the cases, the borrower, uh, in most of the cases, the borrower actually would like to uh, take a lot of time just by creating tenancy on the assets. So this issue has. Uh, uh, actually, it is actually got finality because see, there are many judgments now. Uh, but then, uh, the, uh, the this is uh, uh, this requires now. This requires faster action by the faster action by the banks. So in case the banks have to take action under surface, C, they should not let the uh, they should not let the borrower to create a tenancy uh, on the on the security interest on the property. So if they allow the borrower to create that kind of tenancy and the action is delayed, then the matter will actually be further delayed. So in all such scenarios, like I actually have seen in the case of insolvency also, if a tenant is occupying any property of the corporate debtor, under IBC also, we are not having any right against the tenant to evict them. The tenant has to live there in case the tenancy is bona fide and the rent is being paid and rent is also uh, being received. Then the tenancy is bona fide. We we could not evict tenants from the properties of the corporate debtor under IBC or under surface. C. So these are the two uh, uh, scenarios where the uh, the promoters and the defaulters are getting escaped. Uh, the, the second is uh, uh, the uh, I think recently we've seen uh, orders under surface C that this police was asking for a lot of money uh, for providing uh, uh, police help officially. They they were passing an order based on the total requirement of the police police personnel, and they were passing an order for depositing that money. However, the Allahabad High Court has been kind enough to give an order that this kind of money cannot be asked from the banks because this is an otherwise the obligation of the state. Uh, the 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 uh, DMs and the CMMs they were in fact uh, picking up wrong circular, uh, wrong order of uh, police department where they. Have stipulated some rates for providing security to banks. Uh, uh, so those rates were being charged for uh, this kind of uh, police help for taking possessions. So those these are recent judgments in the November 19. So the Allahabad High Court has decided two cases that this kind of police uh, would not charge any money like this. So then the uh, as uh, under the Surface Act, uh, the TDS is being charged by. Uh, the TDS is being deducted by the buyer. Uh, these are also some of the questions. I'll take it later up because I'm only afraid the time will not be available for this voting from third parties to, extent, to the extent relevant for CIRP, for example, deposits of securities. So this is also why I'm taking because anyone who any any participant who is an IP, they are supposed to even look into the depositories of securities, professional advisors of the CD. I use and other registries keeping ownership records, members, promoters, partners, directors, joint venture partners, contractual counterparties of the CD. The RP has right and power to access them, to approach them, to provide information and to provide documents. So in case anything is not done, the uh, NCLT now insists that you don't file non-cooperation application, you file specific things which are not provided to you 
so that we are able to understand what are the specific things that you are not getting and why it is required by you and what is that process which is stopped because of this so that kind of application has to be prepared specifically to find and to get faster and better result from nclt in case we are simply filing non cooperation application that would not give any result to you so when we talk about the powers to so the bank accounts operation with of course is the power with the rp of course of course everyone is monitoring rp only because the bank account uh, custody and control is with the rp collect all information relating to the assets and financials and operations of the company receive collate and verify the claims submitted by creditors and determine any contingent claims to or to to his best value so uh, uh, there are uh, five or six unclad judgments uh, which are saying that the rp is not supposed to adjudicate regarding the claims or other matters rp is only an administrator rp should verify collate and 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 accept the claim or reject the claim so what i'm trying to say is that in in case i am uh, accepting a claim i am adjudicating if i am rejecting a claim i was told in a court in, in on a litigation that i should i should write a spoken order i should write all the reasons for rejecting the claim and then i had to write uh, a 30 page order why i rejected the claim and then the appeal was filed so that is also called uh, adjudication in case i am rejecting a claim and i am also asked to give reasons a pass an order of rejection then it's an adjudication uh, so the as far well as this uh, contingent claims are concerned uh, uh, contingent claims uh let us take few examples of contingent claims uh the contingent claims are like uh, uh, the income tax department files a claim where the appeal is pending and the crystallization of the amount is not taken place however the demand is raised and uh, the appeal is pending so this is also contingent on the appeal uh the because we have uh, we have to reach uh, uh, another part so this is uh, the powers and duties uh, anyway uh, not very uh, important i am saying the because overview of the ibc and then i will have to reach to that uh, uh, those slides where uh, these are the powers of various uh, uh, ways of rp uh, see when we call it resolution plan uh, the normal scenario under ibc is that the cirp is initiated the the company is uh, uh, stressed under the debt and uh, the key managerial personnel or the uh, or the directors are just uh, under pressure and they are, they are all uh, the, the debt is dancing on them and once this insolvency resolution plan government of the company in the ra they would be dancing on the debt uh, it is actually showing me the a uh, slow network uh, at this moment Yeah, so there is a problem so you will i, uh, I turn off webcom off i'm turning off my being... webcom yeah i'm just i i have turned off turned off my webcom now so i have turned off my webcom and is it uh, yeah, it is I much it will be better it is much better much better now it will be better uh, so uh, also uh, this see this is a, a, a such scenario is not there in surface c because the surface is not about resolution surface is simply about recovery of for debt by just selling the uh, properties selling the assets security interest so uh, the resolution plans can be submitted under ibc it can be submitted by anyone and resolution plans will be examined by rp all these resolution plans will be submitted to coc and the co coc will take a final decision coc can seek modification from from ra coc can uh, uh, decide about the acceptance of a resolution plan based on the uh, based on the uh, bid evaluation matrix and also with the uh, the compliance to rfrp that is to be seen the the, uh, the persons who are not eligible under section 29a is is also not very very relevant here because if the present scenario is to compare so in case the resolution plan is not seen in it is in case the resolution plan is not seen uh, then the company goes into liquidation uh, the liquidation order is uh, passed 
and liquidation order is uh, uh, passed. So the most of the time the liquidator is appointed, RP is appointed as a liquidator. Uh, whereas the uh, in case the liquidator is not interested or the COC is not interested nowadays, the uh, the liquidator also is uh, uh, the COC's choice. The COC may opt for somebody else as a liquidator. Uh, the NCLT has started accepting the COC's uh, mandate to appoint somebody else as a liquidator. Uh, so in the liquidation order, uh, the RP becomes the, uh, so the implication of the liquidation is that all the, all the assets can be sold as a piecemeal or as a business as a going concern or as a uh, company as a going concern. Uh, all these liquidation steps has to be taken and the asset has to be distributed, proceeds has to be distributed, uh, proceeds has to be distributed. So uh, the the waterfall arrangement is uh, absolutely fine. Everyone knows waterfall arrangement. I would actually be uh, moving on to that particular slide where the uh, after the dissolution, we actually will move on to a slide which is called surface action versus invocation of IBC. Uh, this part is very very important for handling so many cases. Mm, so what we have done is that we have uh, uh, com compiled into categories. So we have found the common we suggest the IBC would be the right approach right uh, action uh, recovery would be done through the future cash flows and uh, uh, it would be much more recovery than the liquidation value uh, business continuations will business continuation continuation will improve uh, improve business environment employment implementation of the resolution plan under strict monitoring and repercussions Borrower will also be uh, also be able to reduce uh, liabilities, and post implementation balance sheet will be close to actual uh, assets. Operational creditors, statutory liabilities will also take some hit, and will give some comfortable working for the corporate debtor. Any haircut, deferment, reduction in the rate of interest, etc., would be approved by NCLT and would be binding upon all the stakeholders. So in case of failure of resolution plan, the liquidation uh, uh, would be the only next option, which is inferior economic value. However, in all these cases where some business model is there, where some abida is still possible, where the liquidation value is lower than the debt, servicing is not possible, but the business is continuing, I think the IBC is the best option. Surface will kill the value, surface will kill the business, surface will a spread negativity about the action of the uh, banks. The category two is very, very totally closed unit and no business model exists, uh, maybe because of the technology, because of the product, because of the obsolescence, because of the location, because of the any other factor, no existence of revenue stream, no possibility of revival, no significant asset with the company other than mortgaged assets, no significant asset with the grantors also. In such cases, in case we uh, invoke surface action. It will be recovery through possession and the sale of the asset, which is practically possible for closed units. Very easy to get uh, orders, very easy to get possession. And also the customers would be available. Uh, the recovery suits uh, uh, can be filed against the grunters. So some recovery can be taken from the grunters also. Uh, grunters might even come for settlement. Uh, expenses under surface C is much lower than the expenses under IBC because in IBC, IP fee, valuers fee, transactional auditor, litigation, a lot of fees are there. So the bank can quickly decide and finally uh, take a decision about uh, uh, writing off the uh, asset from the balance sheet. So in such cases, uh, uh, in case we invoke IBC, uh, a resolution plan would not be available and resolution plan would also be available at something which is closer to liquidation value or at liquidation value because whosoever will buy they will buy only for the assets and not for revival bankruptcy of the grunters would also not result in much recovery in smaller cases because the, uh, these are old cases these are old uh, closed companies uh, where the uh, grunters might have also taken precautions of uh, diverting their own personal assets somewhere else However, in the case of multiple claims, frauds, stay by some courts, then of course the IBC will be faster resolution, uh, uh, which will get uh, relief from all these uh, multiple claims or stay from courts. So 
this was the option number two. So the option number three is uh, again a very, very important option where we have seen that the surface action has been taken by the banks in long back and then there is no outcome, there is no result, there is no positive, uh, uh, there is no recovery. So why no recovery? Uh, because the surface action already initiated by the bank but results are not positive. Borrowers creating hurdles and suggestions are not being taken. It's like uh, uh, various kinds of stays are available from any different courts, like statutory liabilities having prior char charges, workers having prior charges, multiple banks having overlapping charges, stay on account of procedural defaults, etc. Property not identifiable or not distinct enough to sell, property not sellable on account of some other linked asset which are not mortgaged to the bank, and property is being claimed as agricultural land. So in case we continue in these cases, like maybe for example, the surface action is continuing for the last two years or three years and the actions are not uh, the, uh, uh, bringing any results. So in case we continue surface action, then the assets would be stripped by the promoters. It will be only skeleton available with the lenders. The value of assets would further deplete very fast. The grantors would be able to sell their assets and also the personal assets to friends and relatives. And the value of the personal guarantee would deplete very fast. So in, in case the assets are already in possession of the banks and the sale is not practically possible because of the uh, because of some other assets required or technical difficulty, then also the insolvency can take place. However, in case the and there is no such difficulty, but it is only the customer of the asset is not available. I think the customer, if it is not available, then it may it be a surface, may it be IBC. It hardly will make any difference. If the assets are under our possession and customer is not available, then hardly there is any difficulty, hardly there is any possibility. Uh, the only possibility is find the customer, uh, reduce the reserve price, try to uh, uh, crystallize loss and uh, uh, faster decision on valuation. That is the only option. Then surface or IBC would not matter. So in such cases, in case we go for IBC, then uh, all the proceedings uh, remain suspending during moratorium. All the disputes remain suspending during moratorium. Uh, the possession will come to IRP, RP. All the bank accounts will all come under the control of the RP. The value, the value of the assets would not deplete further. The promoters would not be able to strip the assets further. Uh, grunters also would have some fear to settle. Otherwise, they will go for personal bankruptcy. All other assets of the company and grunters would be available for repayment of debts and can be, connect, can be connected together for sale if uh, the sale was not being made earlier or it was not possible earlier only for want of some connected asset in insolvency that connected asset would also be available. And in uh, the issue of agricultural land is also not there in IBC because whatever the land may be under IBC, it is uh, the land of the corporate debtor. So it is uh, a land which actually can be sold. Promoters can also assist in the identification of assets, otherwise, uh, uh, because they are not, uh, they will actually also face liquidation. <clears throat> so, uh, the going for the category four, which is large cases, uh, when the cases are large sized, operationally active, uh, low normal revenue stream, indication of financial stress and defaults, high debt burden, unable to service. In such cases, action under surface C, uh, would not uh, catch results. Historically, it has not resulted much because see the in, in cases the physical projections are not possible because of hurdles, because of res resistance by worker, resistance by employees, resistance by the local authorities also because the local authorities, local politicians also say that in case these large cases, large companies go under uh, IBC or the what, what, how do we handle workmen? And there is a possibility of law and order uh, problem in the district or in the town. Um, local politicians also are not interested uh, because that's their vote bank in case any large factory is going to be closed or handed over to uh, police uh, or handed over to creditors. Uh, physical possession, you know, even if taken, then maybe that we need to depute something like 60, 70 security guards there. The, the, uh, the cost of uh, preserving the asset or protecting the asset is very high and banks normally don't take such decisions to increase their uh, cost. 
uh, taking physical possession again at times spread panic uh, and the business whatever is whatever level it is running it might even close the customers might even uh, shy placing further order uh, the banks are also like the difficulty other difficulty the, the additional funding uh, uh, of np account is not possible however in case the interim finance uh, market improves a little there is a possibility of getting interim finance for during ibc operations and the company can even revive uh, by getting some additional working capital during ibc so under this uh, for these kind of companies uh, which are larger in size uh, ibc is the only solution immediately the irp irp rp can be appointed assets study control uh, everything can be taken the no further theft no further diversion no further uh, depletion in the value no further uh, the uh, diversion by the promoters uh, the management also would have no option except to cooperate uh, uh, or a little bit of litigation the stocks everything would be under the control and custody of the uh, rp under the supervision of committee of creditors continuation of business can be assured by just raising some funds interim funds resolution plans uh, can be worked out uh, the uh, resolution plan can be brought haircuts can be uh, sought from lenders government authorities operational creditors the debt can be uh, debt can be brought down to a serviceable level and the company can find a resolution of uh, financial stress uh, for the longer run and the decision will be faster in such cases because any inertia would lead any inertia of the committee of creditors will lead to liquidation and which nobody would like but the most important part in such companies is there should be a positive abeta there should be a business model and in, uh, in that particular scenario in case there is no business model there is no uh, possibility of uh, any positive contribution uh, through the operations then the uh, resolution cannot be found then whatever value would be that value would be only for the physical assets available so category 5 again is uh, for small cases uh, where the small size cases uh, operationally inactive uh, indication of financial stress uh, operationally active also high burden so these are the kind of uh, um, give and take like depending on the case to case uh, we can even um, go ahead for surface action we can go ahead for ibc action also uh, the in such smaller cases uh, it would be seen if it is an msme and the promoters can bring the A resolution plan promoters uh, should be preferred in such cases because they would be giving a better value uh, so in case of ibc uh, such cases uh, can be resolved uh, however in case it is uh, uh, no business model available no uh, contribution to business is being done by the operations then of course surface seek otherwise even if the smaller cases are there msme cases are there uh, in all these msme cases in case the promoters file a resolution plan and they are given appropriate haircut they are given protection from statutory liability they are given protection from local market liabilities uh, then it may be considered as a better solution as ibc rather than surface because the surface surface will kill the business close the business generate unemployment and the negative environment in business in the country uh, category 6 uh, uh, again uh, uh, repeating this is a special industry cases where in most cases most cases it is only the ibc which will work for resolution of the financial stress uh, specific cases could be mini hydro projects like uh, with ppa or without ppa public private partnership infrastructure project build operate transfer cases infra projects build lease transfer uh, all these are basically the public infrastructure projects like toll projects projects in the sector like transport energy communication water sanitation etc operationally active normal or below normal revenue stream abida definitely positive that is high that is not serviced because of the change in the scenario or because of the uh, additional cost of the project overrun of the project or because of the initial few years of losses and the that is very high Uh, so the only objective in such cases is to find the sustainable level of debt uh, find the additional working capital required uh, find an appropriate uh, uh, group or company who would be able to run this who specializes in that kind of project similarly real estate projects also the surface cannot help surface it cannot bring any relief to real estate project uh, the uh, 
group housing projects. Uh, the surface is uh, uh, under surface. The only uh, the, uh, the other than IBC, there was only TDR or SDR or S4A or any kind of restructuring or any kind of uh, any kind of evergreening was being done. However, under IBC, most of the uh, measures those are prescribed under Regulation 37 of uh, resolution uh, Regulation 37. All those can be used. The debt can be reduced. All the non-compliances in the past with the lenders can be waived. Uh, the uh, the repayment period can be increased. The interest rate can be reduced. Uh, the, the joint venture agreements can be changed. The, the company can be transferred to some other group. Uh, the uh, so the debt, of course, haircut is the most important. Management, of course, can be changed. The uh, the project definitely will have. Uh, participation for auction from public at large, the best value would be explored. So whatever value is there, that value would be achieved by waiving or curing uh, any uh, breach of terms of any debt uh, and going ahead with the, uh, going ahead to unlock the value of the project. Government approval for any change in terms of any concession agreement, issue of fresh securities for raising funds, uh, with or without modification of priority over security interest, reduction in amount payable to creditors, reservation by change in management. All this uh, typically IBCs, each and every um, measures which can be taken under IBC under Regulation 37 uh, can be applied and a resolution can be found. So based on our analysis, we have seen uh, to conclude, uh, we have seen that in most of the smaller cases, uh, surface C works well, and in most of the larger cases, surface C is not uh, having any positive impact. Uh, that is the reason that most of the larger companies, larger uh, uh, defaults were continuing, and uh, the banks were trying to restructure under various schemes of RBI or banks. Uh, however, the uh, amount was not being recovered. So it was just outstanding in the bank balance sheet, and the servicing was not happening. So based on this analysis, uh, we say that smaller companies, uh, the surface C is going to stay, surface C is going to survive. Surface C would be a very, very big tool with the bankers. And this, see, like, uh, as uh, we understand from uh, uh, our experience that since 2016 amendments, in September 2016, when the Surface C Act was amended to a large extent, uh, most of the delays, most of the critical issues are all solved. And the last issue was there, the priority of charges, priority of attachments. That issue has also been solved, solved on uh, uh, from January 20, January 24th, January uh, 2020 with the fact from by way of SERSE registration. So uh, uh, the only difficulty that we are presently uh, suffering is the uh, time taken uh, by the tribunal. Uh, in case of any application is filed and the stay is granted by the tribunal, the uh, the uh, the frequency of these stays is also reduced over period. Uh, the uh, directions to these tribunals are also very very uh, stringent now that the stay uh, is something which should be the last resort, unless there is a uh, definitely harsh treatment or the banks have just doing uh, uh, some non-compliances which are not acceptable, then stay should be given. Uh, the borrower will come uh, that uh, we have a better customer who is offering better money. So the now courts are saying, okay, we are giving you one month stay. Within one month, if you don't come, then uh, uh, we will uh, allow this uh, transaction of sale to happen. So uh, IBC and Surface e both have uh, uh, their usage uh, uh, to handle the defaults to recover uh, the money and IBC is primarily should be used for uh, revival, restructuring, and uh, continuation of the company as a going concern. Uh, whereas Surface C is the, the kind of foreclosure, uh, which is uh, used for foreclosing a loan and faster closing closing a loan. According to my estimate, a Surface C case, case can be handled within four to five months, depending upon the availability of customer. We give 30, 60 days notice first, 
and uh, uh, within the 60 days notice in case we receive any representation or any objection from the board promoter we reply within 15 days uh, thereafter we uh, invoke section 134 and uh, in case uh, bm gives us order within one month or within two months after that we take physical possession and immediately after physical possession we give a notice uh, of physical possession and then we issue a sales notice for 30 days and after the sale is excluded uh, done so within six months we uh, we can conclude a uh, surface uh, recovery process whereas in the case of uh, uh, cirp uh, although it is six months in cirp also but practically cirp is not finishing in six months it might even go for uh, uh, more than uh, like nine months in most of the cases i mean in case it goes into liquidation then another one year can be added for liquidation uh, so in case it is the resolution then it can be concluded within a year including the time that we uh, consume in uh, nclt so uh, both are going to survive both are having uh, uh, applications uh, both are having uh, suitable cases uh, surface is much settled now for the last 17 years many judgments of supreme court has actually tried to stabilize the law uh, in case the drt gets capacity uh, surface would be still best to and fast for best tool for faster recovery in small cases uh, and ibc of course uh, uh, would be a very very effective for large cases or complicated cases or attached cases so that there is no uh, confusion about any uh, priority of charges priority of attachment uh, as i said that confusion is already over by sarsay uh, uh, implementation with the fact from 24th of january 2020 so this is what is our comparison between insolvency and surface uh, we also wanted to uh, quickly answer some of the questions which was raised during this chapter 1 of our uh, ibc versus surface webinar uh, the uh, the questions were regarding TDS. I will just give the answer. Yes, TDS would be deducted whenever a property is being sold under surface. TDS would be deducted under Section 194 uh, IA, and it will be deducted at 1% in case the value of the property is more than 50 lakhs of rupees. Uh, it has already been held by the in a case called, called uh, Subankar State Private Limited versus the Senior Sub Registrar, and it is a the court of karnataka has ordered it is in 2016 that the tds would be deductible pan of the owner of the property would be used and the credit for this tds will go to the owner of the property whether it is a, a grantor or it's a borrower himself in case any tax return has to be filed declaring that capital gain that has to be filed by the owner and not by the bank uh, the the expenses on the police, as I already replied, that the expenses on the police is not required now based on the uh, judgment uh, in the case of Allahabad Bank versus State of UP from Allahabad High Court dated 27th of May 2019. And another judgment, which is the, uh, of, the of the same court, almost uh, two days after this judgment was uh, Bank of Baroda versus State of UP, again by the Allahabad High Court dated 29th of May 2019. As per the understanding so far that we have received, the GST would be payable on the sale of equipment uh, or scrap or any stock if the GST is applicable. Otherwise, under the surface year, under the sales under surface year, and it it is it will be payable as we are paying under the surface year. Uh, the attachment of properties uh, there are differing judgments in Delhi High Court, uh, the IDBI uh, Bank. Uh, uh, the Suresh Kumar Goel versus Chief Commissioner of Income Tax, it was held that the IDBI bank had attached the property prior to the attachment by IT department. It was held that IB, IDBI bank had the first charge over the property. In the case of GMG Engineering versus Rajas, State of Rajasthan in this uh, Rajasthan High Court, the Rajasthan High Court held that the sale uh, made under surface cannot be held to be valid. Then state sales tax department has the first charge on the property. Uh, another case, Bank of Roda versus State of Gujarat and others, Gujarat High Court, uh, whether petitioner bank has first priority over secured assets, the, the answer was, state government has not given a specific date and initiated proceedings of recovery. Bank has taken over the possession of the assets of the defaulter under the act. First priority over secured assets should be of bank and not of state government. 
bank entitled to put secured assets to auction and recover dues payable by respondent number four. This this was again held in favor of the bank. Uh, then, uh, as far as my uh, presentation is concerned, it is uh, completed, and also we have exceeded our time because of the technical glitches. I don't think we will will be able to take any further question because of the timing issues. However, we will be uh, giving the replies to most important questions, and we will be sending it on uh, email to you. Uh, uh, we are preparing for various other subjects, which would be very very uh, interesting for all of you. Uh, so we definitely will bring uh, and will announce uh, uh, further. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, although uh, Mr. Shantanu Tire was uh, participating into uh, today's webinar, and originally the technology difficulty at his end, and then later on the technology difficulty at uh, this end, uh, we couldn't get much of his participation. Maybe in the next any webinar, we'll actually seek uh, his opinions also on uh, anything. Thank you very much, participants, that you actually remained connected with me for this two, two and a half hour. Uh, thanks a lot, and have a good evening.